Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum. Selamat pagi. Good morning. Uh, we are still at on lecture number 6. This is uh, course SIG 2004. Uh, classic Sedimentology. Uh, lecture number 6, part 2. Yeah? In part 1 of lecture number 6, we looked at the concept of boundary shear stress and how it influences uh, sediment transport and deposition. The boundary sh shear stress uh, leads to erosion of the bed and uh, the beginning of movement of your sediment grain. Right? So given the right boundary shear stress, your grains start to move. But uh, when your boundary shear stress uh, decreases, your grains will start to fall down again and become deposited. Okay, So bed she bed, uh, boundary shear stress is very important when we want to talk about um, entrainment of sediments into the flow. When do, the, when do grains start to move? Right? So that is affected by boundary shear stress. Now in part 2 of lecture number 6 here, uh, we'll have a closer look at how grains are transported in a current. Okay? So my examples here are sediment being transported in water. You've learned a little bit about this in first year of surface processes, right? So we'll go a little bit into more detail. Right? So this one you know, uh, sediment load uh, refers to the sediment is that, that is transported by a current. Okay, and you can divide sediment load into two main types or classes. First, you have um, sediment which is considered suspended load in your current. These are the particles that are carried in suspension, and they remain in suspension even during low flow events. And this uh, usually, yeah, we usually refer to, uh, yeah. This usually refers to the fine grain fraction of your sediment, it's sealed and clay sized particles. Then you have a second class which is bed load, and this tends to be coarser grain uh, material, sand and gravel sized sediment, and it resides in the bed but goes into transport during high flow events. Okay. So, processes associated with bed load include rolling sliding and saltation. Okay, so let's go through these two classes one by one. Uh, which we will try to visualize uh, these kinds of processes again using the same same cartoons, right? So you have the bed below. Okay, it could be made of sediment. And then you have water above in blue. And then the water is moving from left to right, as indicated by the arrows. Now, these yellow dots here represent individual um, sediment particles or grains. Yeah? Okay. So let's see how they move uh, in, in, diff, uh, in suspended load and also in bed load. All right? So in suspended load, um, turbulence within the flow, so have turbulence, produces sufficient upward motion to keep the grains in the moving fluid more or less continually. Suspended load returns to the bed during low flow conditions. Okay, so most of the time, you get your clay and seal sized particles floating inside the flow. They don't fall down. Okay, uh, these energies, it doesn't fall down. So we say that it is in suspension. Right? And the only the suspended load here, these particles here, these, uh, these finer grain particles, only return to the bed during low flow conditions, very quiet waters, before before it goes down. And sometimes it takes a long time for these particles to become deposited because they are very light. Okay, so that is suspension. Yeah. Then you have a uh, bed load. So most of the time, your grains are in contact with the bed. Okay? And they can move along the bed in two ways. First, there's rolling. 
can imagine things rolling, eh? dia bergolek. Uh, it's just grains move by rolling along at the bottom of the air or water flow. We're talking about water though. Without losing contact with the bed surface. So you have uh, boundary shear stress which is sufficient to move your grain. So it starts to move but in a rolling fashion. Right? It bergolek. So that is rolling. Or maybe your grains don't roll but they slide. So this is sliding. The grains are just dragged along the bed. You tarik it, again. But the current is just pulling your your grains along the bed. Then there is no rotation of your grain. Okay? So rolling and sliding are part of um, bed load, right? Sediment transported, which is most of the time in contact with the bed. But now I want to talk more about saltation. Uh, we just um, we, we just discussed it just very briefly during earth surface processes, right? They're saying, oh, okay, the grains are jumping. But let's look at more detail. Yeah. How do the grains jump and why do they jump? Right? So let's look at the topic of saltation here. Oh, so it is bed load. Most of the time it is in contact with the bed, but sometimes it jumps. And why does it jump? Okay. Particles move in a series of jumps. Okay. So the particles represented by the yellow dots here. This is the originally the, the this is the original position. And then it moves to here, right? After a jump. So particles periodically leave the bed surface, is carried short distances within the body of the fluid, and then it returns back to the bed. Okay. And each jump follows a ballistic trajectory. It's like a missile is flying, basically, right? So it, it gets lifted up, then loses energy, and it goes down again and becomes deposited again. And then it can be lifted again, and the process can, uh, repeats itself. All right? So it follows this kind of trajectory here. It's called a ballistic trajectory. Um, how far and how the high does it jump? Uh, these, are, has, these are general observations. Uh, it can be lifted two to four times the diameter of the grain, and it can be transported downstream 30 to 50 times the diameter of your grain. Okay, okay. so now we take a really close look at a single grain and how it jumps, all right? So again, you have the bed, you have a single particle here of sand, let's say. Let's say it's a fine grain sand. Okay, and the flow is moving from left to right. And what I show here is a graph. It shows, it, this, is a, this is a flow velocity curve. Going from zero to a certain point here, eh? it's increasing in velocity towards the right, all right? So W represents the width of the grain, under gravity, okay, the width, and you have velocity. So, this is the velocity gradient you get near the boundary. Okay, this is the turbulent flow, and this is what you get near the boundary. And what you get is an increase in velocity from the bed as you move further upwards. Okay, the flow velocity that is felt by the particle varies from around zero at its base, here near zero, to a higher velocity at its highest point. So you have a grain here, the flow velocity is going to be very low here, near zero, it's going to be the highest uh, near the top of your grain. Okay. Now, we, now we overlay a, a curve for pressure in this case. So more specifically, we will be looking at what is called Dynamic pressure. Dynamic pressure is also imposed on the particle. Uh, but for this course, let's ignore that. We'll just call it pressure, okay? For, for this course. Uh, we're not interested in the details. Uh, just looking at how grains move, right? So dynamic pressure is also imposed on the particle. Uh, but the magnitude of dynamic pressure varies inversely with the velocity. So meaning um, when you increase your velocity, uh, when you increase velocity, your pressure decreases, goes the other way around. Okay. You might remember this concept, you know Bernoulli's principle, and it's the same thing. We're talking about lift here, talking about flight. So it's the same principle, we're talking about Bernoulli. 
So, um, flow velocity increases upwards, but pressure decreases upwards. It goes the other way around. So, pressure uh, zero here and increases towards the right. Okay, so it's decreasing, it goes the other way around. Okay. And because of this, okay. Okay, so I'm just repeating myself, but yeah, as I stated, so you have higher velocity. When you, once you get higher velocities, you get lower dynamic pressure. Maximum pressure is exerted at the base of the particle. You have the highest pressure at the base of the particle. Here. And you have minimum pressure at its highest point. Right? And the pressure on the particle varies symmetrically from a point at the top, uh, from a minimum at the top to a maximum at the base of the particle. All right. So you have your maximum pressure at the bottom here, right? And the lowest at the top. And the pressure is exerted around the grain symmetrically. Okay. Now this distribution of pressure results in the net pressure force that acts upwards right? remember uh, here uh, you have higher pressure in the low part you have low pressure at the top part right so you have a force which is acting upwards it moves upward you know like atas all right so this force this net pressure force is known as the lift force and it is represented by this large uh, arrow here l eh? so that is lift force and it is opposed to the weight of the particle, which is W, going towards the bottom, right? So all these pressures around the grain combine together as a net pressure force, we call the lift force, and moves upwards. It pushes the grains upwards. And because of this pushing of grains upwards, it reduces the effective weight of the grain. Okay. The pressure, it makes the grain somewhat lighter. Okay. And when it's lighter, it is easier to move. Okay. So it makes it easier for the flow to roll the particle along the bed. The lift force reduces the drag force that is required to move the particle. Okay. So there's lift, easier to move this now. And the particle can be rolled easier. Okay. So remember, uh, we'll go, I'll just repeat the main points here. Increase in velocity as you move further upwards. This is a single moment in time, right? just a snapshot. Okay. Dalam satu masa. So low part is low velocity, um, high part is very fast, higher velocity. And because of this, you get a higher pressure at the bottom and a lower pressure at the top. And the Bernoulli's principle, this thing starts to lift. All right? Because you have lift force, and and that happens when lift force exceeds gravity, exceeds the weight of the grain. Sorry. So if you have a nice spherical grain, it might roll. Right, it might roll. Or maybe the particle remains immobile to the flow. Maybe it remains immobile, it doesn't roll, but the velocity gradient is large enough, the lift force exceeds the particle's weight, so what happens? It starts to fly, it goes up. So there's pressure pushing the grain upwards. And that's the lift force, right? It exceeds the weight of the grain, so this starts to go up. Okay? Uh, lift force exceeds the particle's weight, and the grain will jump straight upwards from the bed. Okay, so it was here, and because of the pressure exerted by lift force, it goes upwards. Okay, once off the bed, the pressure difference from top to bottom of the particle is lost, right? And it's carried down by the current. The current is moving from left to right, kan? bergerak sini, but eventually it will fall down again because there's no more pressure difference. It falls back down and is deposited. It follows a ballistic trajectory like this. Okay. 
Okay, so this is the second part. There's a third part after this. Uh, the main thing is this. Uh, we've looked at the different ways that particles can be moved. You have suspended load, and the process is mainly through suspension. Right? Uh, the grains are usually fi the finer grain fractions, the clays and the silts, and they only fall down when you have very low flow conditions. Then you have bed load, and in this case, uh, most of the time, your grains are in contact with the bed, uh, the grains can jump, that's saltation, but the grains can roll, or the grains can uh, the grains can be just be, just slide along the bed. When we looked at saltation and why grains jump, well they're flying, and based on Bernoulli's principle, you have increased pressure near the base where it is uh, low velocity, decrease in pressure. Uh, higher up, up in the in the flow because there is an increase uh, uh, higher velocities at the top there is a decrease in, in, in pressure resulting in lift force and the grains move in a ballistic trajectory all right so in part three which is the final part for this lecture we look at we'll try to answer this question what is the critical flow strength required to start moving sediment grains okay. when do they start moving what controls that? Okay, okay bye.